Four years ago, if you can believe it, this channel put out one of its most infamous videos of all time, one that leaked that Ampere was going to be getting shockingly little stock for its launch, to the point that in reality, there was really no way almost anyone would be able to get those cards at MSRP or really get them at all during the launch time frame. And of course, that all ended up happening, unfortunately. Now, I bring up that example of NVIDIA's ultimate play just to remind all of you, maybe spur some memories of how you felt in 2020 when something like that happened from NVIDIA, and then also just to remind you that that hyper accurate specific leak that wasn't gained by talking to just a person at a micro center here and there. I talked to people at multiple retailers, both people who work within stores and people who work up in management at the company. And then I also spoke to distributors, AIBs, and even some people at NVIDIA as well. And well, that's what I did today also for the video you're about to see, and actually also for that video that got attacked for being inaccurate when I said that the B580 would not have almost any supply, and yet now you're seeing multiple tech tubers regularly say that Battle Mage's main issue is supply, and I believe I was the only channel to confirm that ahead of the launch. So you should take this report today very seriously, just like those other reports should have, and for the most part were in the case of NVIDIA's Ultimate Play, taken very seriously as well. But anyways, let's get to the unfortunate information. If you look on screen here, here is the RTX 5090 and 5080 supply leak. First source here, this comes from a North American distributor. This person told me that they are getting around 20 RTX 5080s for the first month of sales, and that they have zero 5090s available for the launch month. Now, for comparison, this person tells me that they got a couple hundred RTX 4080s in 2022 for the clients that they supply graphics cards. And, oh, yeah, they're not going to get any 5090s either, possibly until quarter two. Now, a second source here, this person is an AIB. This person says that they will have around the same amount of RTX 5090s for launch as they had RTX 3090s. Meanwhile, they'll have more 5080s than they'll have 5090s in a couple weeks, but it's a fraction of what they received for the 4080 launch two years ago. And so this person estimates that at least from AIBs, remember, we're not talking about any of the founders editions here. I, I'm not 100% sure on that, although I have one source that gives us a hint, but at least for AIB cards that this person estimates there will be similar or even less RTX 5090 supply at launch than there was RTX 3090, which is of course almost non-existent. And then there should be about a third to half as many RTX 5080s at launch as there were RTX 4080s as well, which to be honest, I actually reported years ago that the 4080 launch didn't have a ton of supply. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't a ton. And the only reason it didn't sell out instantly is, well, nobody wanted that card at $1,200. And so if the 5080 proves more popular than the 4080, there's less supply that might also sell sell out pretty quickly as well, although we'll have to see. Uh, source number three here, this person who works at NVIDIA, said that of course they're not exposed to discussions about the supply, but what they can say is that they were just warned that there won't be as many RTX 5090 Founders Editions available from the employee store at launch. You see NVIDIA, actually I know Intel does as well, and I'm sure AMD does. Uh, they have an internal employee store where you can get at cost, or at least usually, I don't actually think it's usually discounted anymore for Intel, but usually for companies that are doing well, they will sell you their own products, you know, to the employees at a discounted price. Now, this person at NVIDIA tells me that they're not going to probably be able to get a 5090 at launch, but the 4090 a couple of years ago, that was very easy for NVIDIA employees to get at launch. To me suggesting, you know, there's some evidence that there might not be a lot of founder supply either, although I have to update you more on the founder supply later, I assume. Now, the final source here from today, this person is an AIB in Europe, says that the 5090 looks like it's going to be very rare, but the 5080 seems to be okay for supply for at least the initial launch. And so what do I think of this leak? Not much really. Honest to God, I was expecting NVIDIA to not have a ton of 5090 supply at launch because well, frankly, AMD isn't competing at that performance tier, and they really won't be competing at the RTX 5080 performance tier quite, we'll get to that later, quite either. And so I don't really see why NVIDIA would at first 
prioritize gaming supply over prosumer and AI supply for the top Blackwell dies. And, and this is something that NVIDIA has done many times before. NVIDIA actually has a pattern of having lineups that compete with AMD at every price point on paper, but not really flooding supply of every product until AMD is also providing a ton of supply. You know, a good example, this is the RTX 3060 that really existed almost in name only. It's like $400, $500 for a very long time. And then once AMD launched the 6600 series, boom, there were more 3060s and they were much closer to MSRP. However, speaking of competing with AMD, has anyone noticed that Nvidia is bringing seemingly as many DLSS4 features as they possibly can, you know, what's not limited by the hardware itself, to previous RTX generations? Like even some features to the RTX 2000 series, apparently. Hmm. So, so, so think about that. And then think about the fact that NVIDIA has priced the RTX 5000 graphics cards, again, with the exception of the 5090, which is, of course, expensive because AMD isn't competing there. But they've priced everything below the 5090 more aggressively than I believe we were expecting and add it all up. Tons of misleading marketing, seemingly trying to overhype you before you see reviews, aggressive pricing, bringing DLSS4 features to previous generations. What's going on here? Has Jensen's heart grown several sizes? I don't think so. I don't think this is how this works. I think Jensen just knows something is coming out from the competition that is forcing NVIDIA to all of a sudden be far more aggressive than anticipated, and I believe that might be RDNA 4, and I think you will agree with me once you see actual benchmarks from AMD of these graphics cards. I'm going to link that now, but first, an ad from a sponsor. This piece of content is brought to you by Benjamin. At Benjamin, their mission is to help users earn at least $100, so a Benjamin, each month. They offer multiple ways for users to earn real cash through their platform, with gaming being the primary focus, though. So users can play games through their app and earn cash while doing so. Benjamin allows you to turn your gaming time into earning time with over a 1,000 plus games and real cash payouts. And that's right, by the way. Real cash payouts, not coins or tokens or points. Get real cash directly deposited into your bank account for playing games. Plus, they even have a daily login bonus so you can boost your earnings simply by showing up to earn. So, support Moore's Law is Dead by downloading the app for free in the description. And ditch the dull banking apps that don't reward you throughout the day with Benjamin. Remember, it is free to download this app, and you're supporting the channel if you download the app for free. So, support Moore's Law is Dead by downloading Benjamin today. Now, if you're a close follower of this channel, you'll know that recently I've been heavily hinting at some RDNA 4 performance data that I have seen. And well, this week I was able to corroborate that data with more sources, and therefore it's not as risky to put it out there. And so I'm just going to show you the performance that AMD is expecting out of RDNA 4, although I will put out a few caveats first. Now, first of all, I'm just not going to talk at all about where this came from. Just, it came from within AMD. Uh, number two, I'm going to avoid specifics on which exact samples were used, but I will say one of them is a 9070 XT sample and the other is a 9070 sample. But what that means is, this brings me to point three, is, well, these were conducted, the benchmarks you're about to see were conducted about a month ago. And so on the one hand, I don't know, AMD chose whatever games they wanted to choose to chart RDNA 4 performance to report inside the company. Uh, I would assume because this is internal only, they have no reason to lie to themselves about RDNA 4 performance. But look, it's like five to 10 games or something. This is gonna be like 50 games average from Tech Power Up or Hardware Unboxed. And so the final average in a couple of weeks might be a little different. Uh, having said that though, this is from a month ago and I know they're trying to improve the driver is more, of course, like you always do up until the launch. And so I could see the performance being a bit higher than even what I'm about to show you today. And, uh, and assuming some of the outliers I saw as well on other pages that I'm not going to show you are fixed. I, yeah, I think this could average even better than what you're about to see. But let's stop delaying this. Here is the slides of RDNA 4 performance. And the first thing I would note from this first slide is that, yep, 64 compute units for the 9070 XT and 56 compute units for the 9070. And if you average it out, it is typically the 9070, 10 to 15% weaker than the 9070 XT. However, note that the 9070 XT 
always beats the 7900 XT, at least in these raster benchmarks. And remember, the 7900 XT is right now selling for $700 usually. But then it occasionally also matches the 7900 XTX in raster. And by the way, this isn't shown on screen, but the 9070 XT, the sample used in these tests, is a 304 watt sample, so less than the XTX and even the 7900 XT power consumption. And then the 9070, yeah, that one, that one is only at 220 watts in these tests, which means, yeah, it uses a lot less energy, but it also means that its boards and coolers could be a lot cheaper on I mean, AMD to make the cut down model pretty aggressively priced, I suspect. And they both have 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, honestly, this performance here, which is to say, the 9070 XT is pretty much always above the 7900 XT in raster, sometimes above or around the 7900 XTX, and the 9070 is pretty close to just 7900 XT raster. It's admittedly at the upper end of the performance I have leaked over the past year, but it is within it, and that is just awesome. But if we go to slide two here, here you can see, at least in the games AMD tested, that yes, sometimes the 7900 XTX manages to roughly tie the 9070 XT in ray tracing. But in other games, the 9070 XT smokes the 7900 XTX by sometimes 20% or even over 50% in ray tracing. Because of this, I suspect that tech tubers who have an average of pure raster games and then some ray tracing titles in their total average uh, for reviews of the 9070 XT, that they will find the average performance, again, in some reviews, right around the 7900 XTX. And also excitingly, the 9070 seems to demolish the 7800 XT, which I point that out, and I also point out that AMD is comparing it to the 7800 XT, because that's probably around the pricing tier that AMD is planning to put this at, and it's not even in the same solar system of ray tracing performance, although interesting, it does seem to be around 7900 XT on average in ray tracing. Now, this is where I'm gonna make an aside though, and point out that I'm not gonna show the slides I did see of AMD versus NVIDIA ray tracing performance, just to protect my sources, I don't wanna get into why. But what I will say is that what I can tell you from what I saw, you should expect the 9070 XT to have ray tracing performance between a 4070 Super and a 4070 Ti Super, and then the 9070 non-XT to have ray tracing performance around a 4070 uh, plus minus 10%, definitely better than the 4060 Ti, you know, still, you know, crushing the 7800 XT in ray tracing, but yes, you know, like you would expect about 20% worse than the 7970 XT. And I think that's plenty respectable. I mean, basically that would mean AMD has effectively gone from behind Ampere in ray tracing per raster performance. I mean, if you look at some ray tracing averages, like you can see that the 7800 XT, which is pretty close to the 6950 XT from the previous gen, it's way below the 3080, like in ray tracing performance. So ray tracing to raster RDNA 3, I would argue, even though in total it might be better than Ampere, ray tracing to raster, it was worse than Ampere. And they're going from worse than Ampere ray tracing to raster performance to seemingly pretty close to lovely. So this might be one of the largest ray tracing over raster performance uplifts we've seen from a graphics card generation. And I suspect that it's gonna be good enough for people to not really care this generation unless they're doing full path tracing where, again, I don't know this for a fact, but it's a hunch. That is where I believe Blackwell will probably still have some massive lead or something, but I think it'll be close enough for most gamers to not care, which whether you want, you like it or not, whether you care about ray tracing or not, that wasn't the case with the previous gen, where some gamers did care a little bit in the high end, especially about that ray tracing difference. But anyways, Moving on to the final slide that I have for you today. Uh, here are direct raster, not ray tracing, comparisons between RDNA 4 and NVIDIA. And as you can see, at least in raster, yep, the 9070 XT is faster than an RTX 4080 in almost half of the games tested. Furthermore, the 9070 non-XT, and for me this is very exciting, seems to be on about the same level as a 4070 Ti Super, which remember, despite NVIDIA's misleading marketing, I would suggest the 5070 Ti that NVIDIA has announced for 750, that card is probably only within 10% better of the 4070 Ti Super if I had to guess, or I'm tentatively expecting it to be a bit weaker than the 4080, meaning that not even the 9070 XT, the 9070 isn't gonna be that far away from the performance of the 5070 Ti if final reviews find the same you know, 
results as AMD did internally, which again, this is AMD's internal benchmarks. This isn't a 50 game average with final drivers from hardware and box. So it could vary, but I still think this is very encouraging. And do you see where this is a huge deal though? Well, I don't know what AMD is going to price these cards at. I've heard all types of pricing actually from like 450 to 750. I don't think it'll be 750 though, but we'll see. But I would suggest that this level of performance means that there's going to be some real competition here no matter what AMD chooses. Because even if AMD were to choose 599 for the 9070 XT and 499 for the 9070 non-XT, that would mean these 9070 XT would be a 5070 Ti killer for $150 less. And at even 499, the 9070 non-XT would be a 5070 curb stomper for 10% less money while giving you four gigabytes more of VRAM. And I mean, look, if they did something like 500 and $400 for these cards, it could be a game changer. I mean, seriously, it could for the market. So yeah, uh, the only other thing I'll have to say is one more thing that makes me excited about RDNA 4 is what I'm hearing about FSR 4. If I put this quote on screen as well, this person here tells me from AMD that what they know about FSR 4 is that they think people are going to be pleasantly surprised by the drastic quality uplift over FSR 3.1 and that the builds you saw at CES were only alpha builds. Now, on the one hand, that's good news because that means the final build could be even better and at least Tamit Hardware and Box was very impressed. On the other hand, hopefully they'll be at least in beta, have some beta release for the RDNA 4 reviews, but we'll have to see on that one. But, oh... Also, very excitingly, this person told me that they heard that the initial FSR 4 launch will only support RDNA 4, yes, but there is currently at least a plan to support RDNA 3 and RDNA 3.5 as well. Eventually, they want there to be two branches of FSR 4, one that fully leverages everything in RDNA 4's hardware for the full feature set, but then also a pared down one where you still get, again, I don't know the number, if it's 75%, 50%, 25%, whatever, a decent amount of the features in FSR 4 for higher quality that are just accelerated by what RDNA 3 and 3.5 can bring to bear. Uh, and so that's not you know as good as FSR 4, but it certainly should be better than RDNA 2's. And so that means there could just be this FSR 4 package that looks at your generation and goes, you're this quality level with uh, RDNA 4, this quality level with RDNA 3.5 and RDNA 3, and then RDNA 2 is a mostly upgraded FSR 3.1. And well, once you hear that AMD is considering doing this, Again, is that why NVIDIA is looking to bring DLSS 4 to their previous generations? I really think that it might be. And with that, that is going to do it for this video. I'm not going to spend any time actually this week analyzing the B570 from Intel. I'm going to save that analysis for the upcoming news, Broken Silicon, in a week and a half from now. Frankly, because, you know... Like hardware unboxed, I just don't recommend it. If you want to know why I don't recommend it, I pretty much agree with what Steve said from top to bottom. So you can just go watch that video or wait for that upcoming broken silicon. And this is especially because from what I've heard, the supply is even worse than the B580. And so I don't really see why I would spend my time analyzing that over upcoming NVIDIA and Radeon launches if almost no one's going to be able to get this thing at MSRP. Uh, and I mean, I've heard hilarious things from sources like, most micro centers for not getting one, the ones that did, it would be a single digit shipment or even literally a single box of the B570 arrived. This really is a paper launch, people, once again. And I don't believe there will be any follow through because Intel is selling these cards at a loss. And if they sold a lot of them, they would go bankrupt quicker than they already seem to be. But uh, yeah, if you are interested in that upcoming Battle Mage analysis, though, or more leaks about RDNA 4 and the RTX 5000 series, make sure that you are subscribed to the Morris Law Z YouTube channel and ring that bell button so you see that new content that will be coming out. Also, please like this video, share this video, comment down below for the algorithm. And if you want to support us, please join the Moore's Law is Dead Patreon. Even the lowest tier, just $2 a month, gets you access to hundreds of episodes of Die Shrink. New ones have just come out as well. A uh, Discord where you can speak about this with me directly and thousands of fans of Moore's Law is Dead and a welcoming setting. You also can get early ad-free Broken Silicons at the proper tiers, free questions on live streams. And actually, the lowest tier also gets you access to asking guest questions. The next guest will be a rather large YouTuber. Agentometry will be coming on again. If you want to ask him questions join the patreon but for everybody else at a minimum though if you made it this far into the video thank you for watching